Hi everyone, my name is Kendrick and welcome to ENFP Mail. Today I get to interview Alexander. So welcome, man. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me on. So Alexander, you recently got your official typing results back. What was your exact type? So can you give us like the whole, the whole type? Yeah, so you got typed as double feminine, N-I-T-I, -I, sleep, consume, play, blast. Okay, so, so you are like the yeah. glass lizard INFJ. Yes. Like, yes. like a really weird, unique yeah. INFJ. Yeah. So what was your, what did you think and how did you feel when you get your typing results back? Yeah. So for that, I have to mention that I thought I was an ENTP. So I thought oh. I would have any and TI. Um, and I was thinking about my typing uh, before, before I submitted or as I submitted and, and waiting for the results, I was a bit weirded out because I saw that I was kind of messy and I thought that that's kind of, uh, like the what you're looking for if you're looking for the extroverted observer, you know, the, the gatherer. But then on the other hand, I, I catch myself doing things where I'm like, am I really not responsible for like organizing stuff and like narrowing down? And I was kind of not super happy with what I thought of my type. And when I got uh, the, the results back, I was like surprised and happy because it made more sense now that I see, okay, I'm NITI, but I'm like this weird, this weird jumper with the sleep first because I thought I was asleep last. Um, so I was, I was weirded out, but, but it makes much more sense to me now. Um, yeah. And it, what was your feeling towards it? Ah, my feelings, man. That's what it's hard about now. Um, so I, I felt actually, I felt relieved, like happy, like no, or like, I mean, it's, it's not like that this is my type. It's what shave, you know? Yeah, type me as, but I'd like trust them. So yeah. I'm very happy that they, that it aligns a lot with kind of what I, what I feel. And I see a lot of the parts now much better. Gotcha. So it makes sense though, because uh, you are an EP IJ, essentially you're like an IJ EP, right? So, so yeah. you are, you are going to be like that weird IJ that's chaotic, but um, yes. were they still able to see that you were, I guess, freaking out about chaos? Because that, uh, ultimately, as an IJ, that's kind of the biggest fear, right? It's like fear of chaos. So, you, talk about your fear of, of chaos. Actually, I don't think that was like a large portion of what they talked about. It was more. No, no, they didn't really mention that. It was more the focus on I'm, I'm like really weird about things and like I'm very balanced with you know me myself and the tribe and people. Right. That was really the thing where you nail me on. That's an observer and not okay. really on the on the. Foot. That's fine. But what about, okay, from your personal experience, do you, do you have trouble with chaos or, you know, like, is that something that you freak out about? Mm. So it, it, chaos in the sense of like, like larger uh, scale. Yes, I would say because be sensory, sensory chaos, sensory chaos. I mean, yeah, it, it's hard to say. Um, uh, yes. So in, in my room, it's, 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 it's a generally very, I mean, not very orderly, but it's like orderly comparatively. Yeah. Um, and I don't really like it when it gets too messy, but like at, at, to a certain point, it's fine. But I, I need to clean up regularly and, you know, organize all my shit and everything because that just irritates me a lot. Right. So, yes. <laughs> Simple answer is, is yeah. yeah. So you have masculine NI and they kind of say that people with masculine NI have like a floating brain. Like they almost don't feel their body. Uh, do you ever experience that where it's like you're like a floating brain essentially, you know, with that... Uh, <laughs> that, that, that like masculine NI uh, and then, you know, feminine SE. So what's been your experience with that? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question because it, for me, it's very hard to see actually my NI. That's like, I, I couldn't, I, I, I have such a hard time seeing it and like uh, seeing it in action. Um, the, the, the SE, I see much more, I have a much easier time seeing like the, the, the kind of gather side, the demon SE, but the NI, I have a very hard time also explaining actually what my NI does. You know what I mean? So right. it's, it's very hard to, to talk about NI for me because I just don't, don't see it, you know? Right, it's, that, that makes sense. It's, it's your first function. It's, it's, it's yeah. so automatic that it's hard to see it. But uh, let, let me rephrase the question then. Um, okay. So usually people with masculine NI, when they see like a vision of the future or, or the mm -hmm. plan, they're going to disrespect the sensory to reach that goal that they have or that, that, place that they envision in their head. So in, in that sense, when, when that SE chaos comes along, it like throws them off 
and they freak out because they're like, you know, for example, I'll give you a concrete example. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, sometimes I talk to my INTJ friends and I ask, or, and I ask them, so you're, you're, you have this like big vision in your head of like thing that you're working on. And then suddenly you have to do your laundry or you have to bring your car in for an oil change or um, you have to do your taxes. Like all these mm-hmm. things like just mm-hmm. wrecks their life. Like they're just like, oh, I, I can't. They tell me, like, oh, I, I just, it kills me. I just kills me. I'm like, why does it kill you? It's just, you just do those and you're done. It's like, no, it mm-hmm. absolutely kills me. So do you, does that kill you? Like this kind of stuff, like this, is, like get in the way of your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's hundred percent true. Um, more so, now, less so because I've learned to see it coming better. Um, because I have like a a system where I can like put all my tasks, so I know when something is coming, so I'm prepared for it. But if something comes that I can't capture, it will irritate me greatly because I'm like, no, I had this was my plan, and this thing is interfering with it now. Yeah, right. That's, that's very very annoying for me. So yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. And it's, it's been like a large problem for me, like taxes and all of kind of deadlines. Right. Uh, when I was younger and I've had to you know, learn by mistakes, you know, right. uh, that, yeah. Gotcha. So can you tell us about your NI box? What's, what's your NI box like? Or like what's, what's in it? Like what's, what's in your NI box? <sighs> That's a, hmm. So I think the NI box for me is it's it's not for example you know casey nice there's maybe a good example of like the ni box yes this like whole uh, like thing for me it's maybe less physical but more like where i am in life conceptually like i don't really want to like i'm studying science biology okay and i i don't really want to want to have anything to do with you know politics or languages or you know all of these other kinds of subjects i just want to stay in my like very narrow perspective of like the science perspective um i see and i see kind of that as my my ig box i'm not very willing to step out of that and, and go like I'm, I'm not politically active because i just i want to focus on this thing here and not you know a thousand things that i just half us anyway right that's and what that, that, that's what that, that, that's what i was trying to get at because the ni box is not physical it's it's actually uh it's abstract you know it's not like mm-hmm. the si box the SI box is, is a physical box, right? So yeah. um, <clears throat> I'll give you a few examples of people's NI boxes and then maybe you can um, elaborate on your NI box, okay? So he's a nice dad, for example, uh, since you brought him up already. You know, mm-hmm. filmmaker, he's a YouTuber, um, and that's kind of what he's been doing for the last several years. It's, it's yeah. videos, 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 right? It's all videos. Um, yeah, right, right. You know, Robert Kiyosaki, an INTJ, um, is all about finance, you know, like rich dad, poor dad, you know? You know, it's all about, it's the same, it's the same concept. Like you watch all his videos, he talks about this exact same thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, so um, my sister, for example, who's an INFJ, well, we're, we're talking about fitness with her and guess mm-hmm. what? She only talks about one thing, yoga, 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 yoga. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, mean, cause I, I work in the fitness industry. I'm a, I, yeah, right. and um, you know, to, to be healthy as a person, you can't just do yoga. Yoga is not enough, right? You need to do weights. You need to do cardio, mm-hmm. you need to do some form of stretching, and yoga's okay. So it, it has to be different components, but no, for her, it's like, no, yoga, no yoga. It's like, well, what about, what about resistance? What about resistance? Yeah. Training? Yeah. With bones and your muscles. No, yo, no, yoga, yoga, yoga. You know, it's, so, so, you know, it's drives like, you nuts. What's that? It, it, it drives you a bit nuts. This, the, you, the, your sister being like, yoga, yoga, yoga. You, you, yeah, because you're, you're basically coming from the other perspective. Like, you know, if it's not in an unknown information, Mm. He doesn't want anything to do with it, right? It's like he's mm. nice that, right? It's like, oh, this year is gonna be a new year. No, he does the exact same. Mm-hmm. Thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so mm-hmm. what's in your NI box? You know, what's in Alexander's NI box? I mean, it's 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 really hard for me to talk about this um, because I'm I haven't really thought about this a lot. Um, yeah, right. Take your time. It's been so recent, but I would say um, in the last two and a half years basically all i've been doing is 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 studying and and not just studying but um i've been involved in like a science project at, at the university and it's it's like a special branch of biology you could say like genetic engineering and this is like <laughs> if i talk to anyone in 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 
in, in university about this or about you know what we could do in the future with this. It's, it's always kind of like the same thing. It's like um, this very particular part of science and it's like uh, the uh, everything to do with space. So you know how can we go to Mars uh, and, and actually sustain life on Mars? You know that's something I will I'm, I'm very very excited about. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'll clobber people over the head with that all the time. It's like, yeah. guys, like, this is for me, like, really the, the passion, yeah. the space exploration. Right. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's kind of satisfies the well, what you were no, asking, but no, it does, it does. So, yeah. for that part of your life, that then that that's your ni box. What about the other parts of your life? Like, what um, what about like do you do you exercise, for example? Yeah. Yeah. What's your obsession with exercise? Like, what is your go-to? And you refuse okay. it. Yeah, so I have two things. So at the moment, because I'm still, I mean, uni is, is online. I'm, I'm staying at home all the time. So I go running every day, Okay. Um, which which is really, really good for me um, yeah. because I like need to move. Um, otherwise, I will go play volleyball. So really only volleyball. Yeah. That's literally the only sport I do. And I do it two times, three times a week. Yeah. Sometimes more. Uh, I just love it. And I don't really want to do any other sports because I don't know. I found my thing that I like. And yeah, I exactly. Over and over again. Yeah, there you go, man. There you go. There's your NI box. Yeah. I don't know if you got your, um, your, um, you know, that other INFJ that, that plays tennis was his name. Did you see him? The, the, the no, no. Guy? Yeah. He, he's like an NITTI also. And uh, yeah. it, for him, it's just, it's just tennis, just tennis, you know, like it's just, yeah. you know, it, so it's like for you guys, it's just like, no, no, that's it. Nope. For for my work, that's it. For my fitness life, this is it. You know, it's like yeah. everything has like a compartment, and there's yeah, like yeah. one thing there, and that's it. If if it's something else, you know, f you, go away. You know, like it's yeah. uh, so. So I find that very interesting. I, even for dating too, like I, I used to have an INFJ roommate. He only dated Asian girls. You know, like it's, <laughs> like it's <laughs> you know. I mean, <laughs> not complaining, but <laughs> what's that? Yeah, I no, mean, it's, no. it's not a bad choice, I think, but uh, yeah, I mean, sure. No, but like, you know, he, he was, he, he was, a, he was a white guy and he only like Asian girls and it's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's like everything is like a compartment. So I, I find it very yeah. fascinating actually. I'm like, huh. So every facets of your life has like an NI box, you know, like, you know, so, um, we can, you can go back to this later, God, uh, later on, if you think of something sure. uh, in the sure. back of your head, but, yeah, um, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Mm. Now, I want to talk about you, your um, sexual modalities. You're a tester first, mm -hmm. and uh, you are visual second. So I noticed that people who are testers, even if they're IJs, they seem to like to experiment on different like sensory stuff. Uh, for example, a lot of testers, I noticed, even if they're IJs, they like to try different food, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like a contradiction because you have, an, you have a box, but then there's a part of you that likes to experiment on different stuff. You know, my sister likes to try different food, likes to touch different like leaves and materials. Uh, mm -hmm. My girlfriend was recently type as an, you know, kind of like you. She's actually a, um, an INTJ um, mm -hmm. jumper. So N I F I. Mm -hmm. yeah, those weirdos. Play blast, double feminine, mm -hmm. and she loves to experiment different food too. So talk about mm -hmm. your experience with like test as a tester. You know, trying out, experimenting different stuff. Mm -hmm. That that's a that's a very good question because I I I, I thought of something with with food because I like. I really like to try out different foods, but I have like my moments where it's it's not just any food. Like I'm not gonna try like I mean depending, but it's it's mostly like Asian food or like Middle Eastern. Okay. It's like in in in, in these more narrow things, I like to try like different things. But uh, I'm yeah, I mean I'm I'm open to many things, but I'm I'm wondering if it's really also kind of kind of narrowed down but that's that's been my experience um with the food i mean i'm really open to pretty much anything um although i am vegetarian so that also narrows it down uh, quite a lot right. um i'm like really when it comes to like um mm, i would say i mean materials i'm i'm really it's, it's sort of very weird when it comes to like clothes or materials or you know knives like yeah. i want it to be like very very pretty or just in a way that i very much appreciate it right and like if, if, if the, like the wood is very smooth or like has a very nice texture um that's something i appreciate a lot and I'm, I'm not sure if that you would expect it from like a an nt maybe like i'm like okay does this work right is this good for me i'm not sure but uh i have not an obsession with it but 
somehow weirded out by these things. It's it's like a weird contradiction almost, right? Like yeah, yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But maybe that all fits into you know kind of the weird wiring stuff the type that I have has because it's a weird type in some in some sense. No, it is right exactly. Um, I'll give you an example and then maybe you can elaborate. So um, I noticed that the IJs likes to try different sensory stuff like INTJs and INFJs in general. Um, even if they resist it at first, but then when you force them to do it and they actually start mm -hmm. doing it, they, I, I noticed that they, they love it. Uh, so I'll give you a concrete example. Um, okay. So my sister was dating an INTJ for the long time and she's an ENFP, so no surprise, you know, IJ, EP, dating together. Um, mm -hmm. And for him, his, his NI box is tech. Like he likes gadgets and yeah. stuff and yeah. the, the messed up things. He doesn't even like to use them. He just likes to buy them. He likes to research it and buy them, but he doesn't mm -hmm. use them. kind of like weird. I've always yeah. found it weird, but you know, and he does, he disrespects sensory for sure. Because like after he buys it, he just throws it away. Like he'll throw away yeah. that thousand dollar TV, for example, like, like brand. Yeah. New. And I'm like, yeah. crazy, right. But anyways, mm -hmm. whatever, That's a different story. Um, sure. so my sister's, my sister loves traveling and he forced him to go travel with her to Turkey. And uh, there, they, they rode dune buggy. Mm -hmm. And he got on a dune buggy, and it's very SE, right? Like the dune buggy. Yeah, and he loved sure. it. Absolutely loved it. Like the mm -hmm. chaos of like, this physical object, like going through like different dunes and jumping on dunes and stuff. And I noticed that IJs, like INFJs or INTJs, might you know, resist this kind of stuff when they start doing this kind of like more SE kind of like um, you know, physical stuff. They, they love it. Like, you know, like going to a playground or something or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, um, you know, even for exercise, I noticed that people with SE likes to try different exercises, even, even if they're forced to do it, like when they're forced to do it and they try, they're like, oh, I love it. You know, it's, it's like a weird contradiction because you have your mm -hmm. NI box, like volleyball, you know, like Alexander only likes volleyball and running, but then if someone forces you to try like something else, you might be like, oh yeah, this is kind of fun actually. So what's your experience with like trying different sensory stuff and then there's that, oh, I actually enjoy it. Now, I'm not going to do it again unless my friends force me to do it. <laughs> But, but you, enjoyed, you, enjoyed it, you enjoyed it in a moment. So talk about that. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a good one. Um, so, I mean, a, a couple of things come to mind, but uh, like when, when friends drag me out to, to uh, say like a movie night and they say, okay, we'll not tell you what movie we will watch because if, if you won't like it, you won't come, right? So <laughs> they kind of have to, to kind of force me to go there. And, and when you watch the movie and, you know, it can be something that I wouldn't watch alone, but somehow with everyone there and like uh, it, it can, can also be a shitty movie and i'll enjoy it a yeah. lot actually but i'm not gonna next time if they would have told me i wouldn't go and also the next time i wouldn't do it if if they would if they wouldn't do like the same tactic again so yeah. so that that's for sure um kind of in that direction um otherwise I don't know. I've, I've never thought about these things. It's it's quite a, it's it's quite interesting. Um, you might have to, you might have to ask me maybe at the. At yeah, the we, end we can cycle back later. Yeah. It's fine, man. Um, yeah. Let's talk about you being a double decider. Um, so are you relatively balanced with self and tribe? Then, like you, you know, like you know, you're still self above tribe, so you do stuff for yourself. But you can see the point of view of your, you know, your friends and family members. Yeah. I'll talk about your experience with that as a double decider. Yeah. yeah. So. When I was a bit younger, I had the experience that I was being more of the like selfish and not really looking at what the tribe does, what the tribe wants and stuff like that. Um, and I've had, I've had like, some experiences that kind of opened my eyes to, hey, like other people also have different opinions and you also have to respect that. So I, I have become, I think, very, quite balanced on, on that. Um, and especially when I talk to like IPs, especially if they're like, like TI, uh, masculine TI, TI. Uh, I can see like when, when they're being like stupid and very, very like uh, narrow and like unmovable. I'm like, hey, you idiot. Like you also have to look at what the other people want, but at the same time, I didn't also realize, wait, but I do the same thing. So it's kind of like also a reminder for me uh, for that. So, so it's, it's, it's very interesting. And, and with the TIs, like I get along with them quite well, but at some point I'm always like, ah, oh, you're such an idiot because they're, TI had this, it's such a strong muscle because it's at the top. My TI is only third. They'll, it'll often feel to me a bit like too much, like because it's just a TI on, on overdrive, basically, right? Right. 
yeah, you're you're, you're dropping oh, yeah. the CI and it's not doing anyone a service anymore. Like um, yeah, yeah. Like from an SF point of view, like it's, it's like if if people don't care about your, you know, ID, right. then there's no point, right? It's kind of like uh, what's his name, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got, I, I, did I did I get his name wrong? Anyways, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he's like that random double decider in a group of TIs, and like, and like, I don't know if you saw that uh, video in, in in objective personality, but um, he was the only one that said, "Look, guys, it doesn't matter how good your logic is. If no one cares, then no one's gonna listen to it, right?" And then all the other yeah, TI people are like, no, you're wrong. You know, you're, you're, you're the idiot here. Yeah. If we just explain to them better, they would understand. It's like, no, yeah. you no, know, it has to be like, has, the tribe has to like it. The people has to like it. They don't like it. Then there's no point. So yeah. actually, I want to ask you about that. So you have FE. It's feminine FE. Mm. Um, the way they describe FE is if people are not happy, then it doesn't work. So talk about that sentiment, you know, because for me, I can't mm -hmm. be, I can't be happy if it doesn't work. But for FE people, if you're not happy, then it doesn't work. You know, it's like, I'll give a concrete example. Mm -hmm. I know this is a lot. I, this annoys me a lot, actually. It really annoys me so much. Um, so, and I, I know it's not done in like in, in, in a malicious way, but I think it's kind of manip manipulative. Mm -hmm. So I noticed with a lot of my FE friends, they like to take people out for dinner to kind of like, you know, make them happy you know let's go buy you dinner yes but it's yeah. almost like a manipulation tool because now you owe them a favor you know and uh oh okay and, yeah but but they're they're doing they're proactively you know taking you out on dinners to build up that favor points right and it like pisses me off to no end like i almost want to reject it's like no i don't want to go to dinner for you right but they're my friends so i'm like okay bye whatever but it's like it's 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 like um so it's kind of like, yes, I'm making you happy. Now we can do work after, you know? So, um, so there, there's two, there's basically, this is two questions. So number one, um, for you, is it like, if you're not happy, it doesn't work, number one. And number two, what's your experience been like with this kind of like relationship? Do you, do you feel like this, it's, it's, it's been, it's bad to kind of like, hey, I'm gonna make you happy, but really I'm just collecting favor points so that later I can cash in, you know? Okay, so I'll start with question two because um, I'm not sure if that's if that's so accurate for me. Maybe I'm just seeing myself wrong here, but you're accusing me a bit. No, <laughs> no, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm not no, 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 I just, it's fine. Um, so for me, the, the FE is like, I really want to, like, I, I, I love cooking, obviously, um, but I really want to share it with someone and I want to see them or I want to see the reaction and I'm very happy if they also like it. Right. And it's not, and, and, and as I see it, it's not because I want to gain favor points. I genuinely just want them to be happy. Right. I just want them to enjoy the food or to have fun and just, you know, to see their face light up when I, I do something for them that they wouldn't expect. And that's just, just because I, just because I, just because I want to, like, I don't need a reason to do something that makes someone else happy. I just do it. So kind of that. And I think that's, if you you can't do that on overdrive though because that's like the the, the, the ej with the feminine fe they'll do that all the time and then it's not left for them but i have this balance i see like i look for myself first and then everything i have left i can give to someone else that's kind of how i see it. I, I i've never had this problem with ijs that's you know infj it's more mostly like an enfj or esfj that i've noticed we're yeah. we're doing this yeah. And maybe it's to fill a void inside where they don't feel good. So they want you to reciprocate that kindness mm -hmm. that they've shown you. So it's no longer like, a, it's no longer an act of kindness or an act of like, I just want to see my friends happy. It's more like, you know, I made you yeah. happy. Now you have to make me happy, you know, later on. It's so, uh, but, at, uh, but guess, but you know what? The people has always done this to me. It's has always been like an ENFJ friend or ESFJ friend. So I, so it's, it's fine. You know, okay. but okay. I, I noticed that INFJs have done this too before, but it's the, the motive seems to be different. So, you know, um, okay. yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. But I wanted to clarify from your perspective because, you know, you have that FE, right? So I was curious. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about the first question? So if you're not happy, it doesn't work. Let's, let's go with that. Yeah. So do you mean, let's say if, if I, if someone tells me or if I know I need to do something, but it doesn't really make me happy, then it, it doesn't work. Or, or what, what do you mean? Um, I'll give you a concrete example. Good. Yeah. So in the Japanese culture, and I think a lot of cultures do this, 
-hmm. you can't do business with that person until you've you know taken a night out in the town and you know go for some drinks um mm -hmm. and go party first right so everyone mm -hmm. has to be happy first before you can work you know before you can work so it, it's kind of like you know like um mm -hmm. you, know, if you're, you know like like i've just seen people do this like okay, let's not talk business right now let's let's go Let's, let's socialize first, you know? I totally see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, so what, what's your take mm -hmm. with that? Like, you need to socialize with someone first before you can get to work or? Okay. Or so, what? Yeah, so what I would do usually is get to work right away and then socialize. But what I've learned is that's actually not usually the best approach because it, it matters a lot, like uh, what you say. So really what I've learned is if, if, if you, it's not that it doesn't work if you don't click with a person for me personally, but um, if you do, it, it, everything is much less tense, everything is much more open um, and, and you get things uh, done way quicker. And if you see that the person is really kind of like weird or like not weird, but um, has, I don't know, super not in the growth mindset or whatever, you can also say, okay, you know what? maybe I don't really want to work with you anymore because I don't uh, see this making sense because we're just kind of have a very different mindset on how to approach it. Right. That's interesting. I find that fascinating because I'm the opposite, right? Like <laughs> yes. if, if it doesn't work, then I can't, then I can't be happy. Right. Like I always yeah. work first and then I can relax after. Like I don't do the pleasant tree stuff that people normally do. Like for example, mm -hmm. um, if I'm dealing with someone, I'm not going to go, Hey, do you want something to drink or do you want something to eat first? You know, like yeah. I don't want to deal with that BS. Like let's get to work first, and afterwards we can go. Afterwards we can go celebrate, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But but it also I also want to work with them first because I don't want to celebrate with you if I don't like you. Like that's like kind of like the FI. Yep. Like, I don't yeah. want to spend time with you and like do like go eat. I don't even want to eat with you if if I if I don't like you, you know. So I I, I can yeah. work with you if I don't like you, but I wouldn't spend my free time uh, with yeah. you if, yeah. if I don't like you. So for you it's kind of like the opposite. It's like yeah. Yeah, I'll go like socialize with you, but if I know sure. like, if you're not likable, then I'm not gonna work with you. You know, it's it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah that's that's really fascinating. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's really how it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because my my social yeah. time is important to me, and it's personal, right? So maybe for mm -hmm. you, the PI, you know, the work time is important for you. And yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. kind of what you, what you value, right? The socializing thing. Okay, I can socialize with idiots. It's fine, but like when it comes to work, yeah. only with serious people that I can trust. You know, it's it, it's. You know, yeah. I, I yeah. find it quite fascinating. <laughs> that, that's a good yeah, yeah. Point. yeah, no, that's yeah, it is. It's a good point. Yeah. Now, you have masculine TI, but it's not your first function, so it's not going to be as aggressive as like a an ISTP or an INTP. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, but have you ever caught yourself like slapping people in the face yeah. <laughs> when they said yeah. something completely illogical? And yeah. then like, hey, you know, that's wrong. And then like, your masculine inner self just comes out. And then you're also double masculine inside, right? So it's super like aggressive, right? So talk yeah. about that aggressive double masculine inner world swing. Yeah, so that's, I mean, as, a, as an anecdote, um, usually, like I'm, I'm, I'm vegetarian, I'm quite knowledgeable about, um, you know, uh, the whole information about sustainability, let's say. Yeah. And often people ask me about it. And then what I often hear is things like, oh, you know, but, um, uh, you know, being a vegetarian, it's, 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 uh, you need, you would need, if everyone would be vegetarian, you need much more resources to produce all the vegetables. Uh, because, you know, uh, instead of, you know, eating meat, because you need to grow much more. And I'm just like, uh, when someone tells me that, or, or, or someone told me that, uh, like a girl I had just met, and I just went into her face like, no, it's wrong. And I'm like, I was kind of surprised because yeah. I don't, I don't usually do that. But yeah. sometimes it's just, I've heard it so many times and then it comes again. It's like completely oblivious. And I'm like, you're wrong. Like you're wrong. And then she looks at me like, what is going on? Why, why are you doing this to me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't have it very often, but when it's, especially when it's something that I have heard endlessly and many times again, then I can be very, very like, you're an idiot. That's so wrong. Let me tell you how it really is. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And I, I, you know, you know what I noticed too is that you only um, that double masculine inner world only came up when it that when the topic was about things, you know, like vegetarian, <laughs> you know, vegetarian, right? Yeah. 
So it, it's a thing. It's like a thing would trigger that, you know, not not like a people. A people thing would be like, oh yeah, whatever. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that's what uh, Dave and Sharon also noticed. They say I'm, I'm super cool about these things, but when the things come out, I'm like, I get super aggressive for some reason. Yeah. Like, when people miss uh, miss uh, side statistics and stuff like that, or you know, uh, you know, I, I get very aggressive about about. Um, my roommate um sometimes because it's like a communist and i'm very opposed to that kind of thing and yeah there i can get very very aggressive on like the, the facts of or like the, the concept of the whole economics and stuff like that right yeah. um you're vegetarian right so you eat eggs right it's like so this was kind of a ruse i'm actually a vegan i don't eat oh you're vegan eggs, so. oh, you're vegan yeah. okay okay, okay. Yeah, because there's the difference between vegan and vegetarian, right? Yeah, there is. Yeah, the vegetarian can eat eggs, which I thought was always kind of weird. It's like, is that still animals? Like, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> weird. I mean, vegetarians are weird. <laughs> What's that? Vegetarians are a bit weird. Uh, they, they, they have milk too, right? And then milk is not good, right? It's, it's not good. Vegans don't touch milk, right? Because it's still an animal byproduct. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, some vegans don't even touch honey. Um, I'm not part of those vegans. I mean, I don't really. I mean, I don't really. I care about that too much, but yeah. Well, honey is not really an animal bite. I mean, it, it is, but it's not. It did come from inside them, right? They cultivated it, right? So. Oh, no, 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 it's 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 bee puke. Like they. Oh they really? That's what Yeah, they puke it out. Yeah. But I, you know what? I, I I don't feel as bad with that because it's not like, you know, because like with with the milk, they're like kind of like you know pulling their udder, but <laughs> it's a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the, but the bee puke, like when you puke at something, if you want to eat my puke, go ahead. You know, like you know, someone got hurt, yeah. you just puke, right? Like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to, they, the puke. <laughs> yeah. To to be like fair, the bees use their puke to like build all the stuff, and, right? Like, right. To feed the, the larvae, but I mean, yeah, I guess you're technically, stealing, I guess you're stealing from them, which is bad. You're stealing from them, which is bad. But kind of like I draw a bit of a distinction between like bees or insects and cows are like mammals, so it's it's much like it's a whole different like. So you're cool with abusing insects, concept. not mammals. <laughs> Just <kidding>. yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like if there's if there's like a bug, like a, a moth, a, like a food moth, yeah, like I'd kill that motherfucker because that's just. <laughs> I love no, it. But yeah, I love it. It's like a cow. Like there's no need for me to kill the cow. I can just eat, you know, tofu and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's cool. So you would eat insects then? I've actually tried insects. Yeah. Uh, also, like since I've been vegan, I've tried insects. Yeah. It's it's pretty expensive, and I don't really see much uh, of a benefit in terms of taste. So, yeah, in yeah. in um in um, if you go to Cambodia, they eat spiders there, right? Like the tarantula. Uh, I hate spiders. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> really, I really hate spiders. I'm not sure if I would be able to eat one. Don't go to Cambodia then, and don't go to Australia. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm kind of. That's really kind of a reason why I'm kind of. Uh, not sure about going to yeah Australia or something like that. Like seeing like a huge fucking spider there. Yeah. What was it again? Uh, what was the spider? The huntsman spider? Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I was watching that on my phone. I was like, I do not want to see this. Well, fuck this shit. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. No. But, you know what? I, uh, I I was scared of spiders growing up too. Like really scared of it. And then um, mm -hmm. and then one day, one of my friends said, Hey. Um, I have a friend who's scared of spider. You know, he's also an IJ. He's an ISTJ, yeah. and he's yeah. he was like kind of acting cocky, right? And he's like, "Yeah, Kendrick, if you let them put that tarantula on your hand, I'll touch it." I'm like, "Okay, well, first of all, that's not even fair because I have to hold it and yeah. you have to touch it, right?" Yeah. But then I thought for a second. I'm like, <laughs> "You know what? I think he's even more scared than me than spiders." So I'm gonna do it. Smart. Even yeah. I'm scared to death. I'm gonna do it. So they put oh. this they put this big tarantula on my hand. I was inside. I was dying so bad. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, kill me right now!" And it's like crawling my head, and I can, <laughs> feel the, I can feel the, the the claw of the spider digging through my skin as it's crawling, oh, and I was like, man. "Oh, fuck my life!" But I, yeah. I, had a, I had a poker face, right? So I was like, "I was like, okay, you, you guys can take it out." They're like, "Okay," I was like, "Phew," because I I knew if I was scared, they're not gonna take it out, right? So I was like, they, they took it yeah. out, right? and then my yeah. friend ran away so far, right? Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, you my got friend, him. My friend grabbed him and then tried to put a spider on him. He was like freaking the fuck out. And I'm like, <laughs> but I also learned at that moment that hey, my fear of spider actually went down a lot since I had the tarantula on my hand, you know? Like, 
So you're telling me you have to put a tarantula on my hand. Is that, is that it? Well, I would say that the, my fear went from 100% to 25% after that moment. And I was like, oh, oh. interesting. It was like, oh. it's kind of like I overcame like a big, like, psychological fear, you know? Yeah. I'm still, I, I still don't like them. I hate those fuckers. But, you know, mm. I, like, I'm not, like, I'm not deathly afraid anymore. Before it was like flight or, fl- fl- fight or flight fear. But now it's just like, I hate those pieces of shit, you know? It's like, it's different. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. yeah, you know, confronting your fear, that's... Uh... That's the way to go. So, because we're talking about spiders right now, um, I want to talk about your second sexual modality, which is visual. Yeah. So I yeah. noticed that you were picturing this very vividly, uh, especially when we talk about the huntsman spider. Uh, talk about your, oh yeah. talk about your visualness, you know, like your how strong your visual um, sexual modality is. Like, how good are you with the visuals? Like, are you very, you know, like is your when you think about things in a visual way, is it like it's like watching a movie? Is it is it like that? Like you can experience it, you can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's that's very. That's why I thought it was a visual and not a tester. Can, can you describe it further? Because I'm really curious to um, sure. hear what sure. like what your experiences with like visual. Yeah. So there's there's one thing about how I remember things. Uh, like that's two things. So how I remember things and how I like if I think about something. So when I remember, let's say, I'm studying for a math course, right. I remember a formula or a definition. I like. If I like close my eyes, or if, if even if I don't do that, I just kind of see like the page, or like see like the formula. It's not like that. I just know the formula. It's like I, I literally see it, what the formula is. And if I don't, if I haven't memorized it enough, I don't see it like clearly. So it's just kind of like scrambled. It's it's super weird. And when I, when I let's say think about a situation, it's like or when I just think, just think. It's, it's really like a movie um, and to a certain extent I can like it kind of it, it kind of just flows and some things I can more like it's very hard to to control ex- exactly what I'm seeing and it just flows mostly and sometimes oh, I can like, oh that's interesting so you can't control the visual it's, it's no no not really no no it, it, it's when I try like it's very weird like if I for example when I try to visualize someone jumping from a cliff he'll like jump, but then like kind of in a weird way, like go back up. Like some, I can't just picture what I want. Not, not right. always. Oh, it's like a dream because in dreams you can't control yeah. You normally. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I have, I have very, very vivid dreams also. So, uh, yeah. You know, as a masculine feminine, I don't see anything. <laughs> That's crazy. Nothing. I, I can't visualize to save my life. I've tried many times and I, nothing, nothing shows up. You know, because wow. my because as a as an audio, my opposite would be visual, right? So I think yeah. it's the one area that I couldn't tap into. Um, and I notice people who are visual, they can't listen to audio stuff because they almost don't pick up. They don't pick up the words. They just feel they just pick up the vibe, but not the words. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to auditory stuff, no, I pick it up like magic. Like, like I was listening to something at two times the speed um, a few days ago. And my girlfriend, my girlfriend is like, do you even know what their person's saying? And I, I told her exactly what the person was saying. It's like, oh, what the hell? You know, it's like, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, and I'm also kinesthetic, right? So for me, I'm, I, I, like, I work in the fitness industry, for God's sake. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, if you are double feminine, your opposite would be kinesthetic then. So do you feel like you have trouble yeah. with kinesthetic stuff? Yeah. If, if you take sports as an example, I'm really bad at sports where you have to be shovy, like physically shovy. That's why I also play volleyball because it's a sport where you, the only interaction you have with the other team is like at the net. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's it now. But, but, but football or like basketball is like a sport I really suck at because I just, I just have a trouble, you know, uh, yeah, being very physically showy in a sense. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure what, what, what would you also put down or put into the MM category, like the, the, the kinesthetic. Um, well, a lot of MM people, for example, especially the SE people, and it's super annoying, right? Like if you have like an ESTP in the gym, for example, yeah. they'll be lifting weights. And after they finish the lift, they take the bar and they slam on the ground. It's like, uh, bam. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be like, yeah. You know, and then they'll like grab, okay. you know, with like masculine FE probably also. And then they'll like grab the weights. And after they lift the weights, they're just like slamming the ground. Boom, boom, boom. You know, it's making all the noises. And I'm like, oh my God, this person's so nauseous. You know, it's like, yeah. so I, I noticed that maybe people with feminine SE, when they put away the weight, they're like, very gentle about it you know it's like yeah you're like are you are you more gentle with like handling yeah, yeah, yeah for sure because I, th- I i i think like 
oh, like, yeah, it would be obnoxious or annoying if I would just be very loud with it. Yeah. So, so I try to be like, not, you know, smash everything down because I also want to be careful. Yeah. So I totally hate, the way it's, I hate yeah. training people who are like the dull masculine F E S E. Those are like the worst to train because like they're doing the bench press and not only are they screaming when they're doing the bench press, like, ah, you know, mm. they also mm. have like a fountain that's coming out of their mouth, like, like spit, like, yeah. it's like hitting my face. I'm like, oh, this, this, this is disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, I have to spot. Yeah. I have to spot them, right? Because otherwise the bar's gonna crush them. Mm-hmm. But if I put my face too close, I'm gonna get hit by the spit, right? So it's like, uh, yeah, you, sh- you should wear a face shield, you know. Yeah, I'm a not face shield. <laughs> put on my put on my my mask. <laughs> my my right my, 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 my yeah. SWAT, SWAT team mask. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. Yeah, no, no. I see. I see what you're saying, the team. That's totally not me. This 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 super masculine kinesthetic. No. Yeah. I noticed that people with a feminine SE, they're so flowy that sometimes they have trouble like engaging their body properly. Um, oh. like, um, yeah. like for example, if I'm training someone that might have masculine SE, not, not all, not all the time, like ma- masculine SE in the sense of, um, maybe a double feminine, let's say not, mm-hmm. not everyone, obviously this is just like me just kind of making an observation, sure. maybe someone with demon SE, let's say mm-hmm. like their body's so like jelly, you know, like when we're, tra- we're trying to get them to do a, a proper movement and the, form has to be precise they can't seem to do the precise movement you know like engage your core you know like step one is like you, your back must be perfectly straight and then you have to push with force yeah. and they can't seem to do it like properly without like like wiggling around and stuff and i'm like stop wiggling you know just like hold the pole of your body control your body yeah. yeah that's interesting because uh you know also in volleyball there's like you know like uh, when you smash down you have you're supposed to have a very specific like body form to do that and some people just can't get it down but i'm actually quite good at these things like the the also in school when we did like you know spear uh, throwing and all of these kind of things i usually my form would be very very good so it don't really relate to that like this yeah unable to move my body in like a particular way but i've seen it a lot i've seen it a lot in sports do you think it's because you have double mass uh, double activated se do you think that that helped you i would i would guess so yeah yeah, but also there's then maybe on the spectrum of the feminine demon SE because it's not black fit, and then also maybe you know statistically more on the side of not being like weird, wiggly. So, yeah, I have. I can't tell you how many INFJ clients I have. I have so many INFJ clients. I don't know how they find me, <laughs> but, but they find me, and yeah. I have like an army of them. Like like recently, I had an INFJ client for. I've had. I've, he's been my client for like four years now or longer actually. You know, so I'm part of their yeah. I, NI box obviously. Yeah. He doesn't want to train with other trainers. He just wants to train with me. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Brings another guy in to, tra- to train with me. And there's another INFJ. And, uh, <laughs> you know. I, <laughs> That's hilarious, man. But then they're different yeah. though. Because the, the, the guy that I was training originally is an NITI. And the next, the guy that he brings in is an NIFE, right? And I knew right away because mm-hmm. he talked about energy and like, and like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's like a super NF. Yeah. You know, yeah. you yeah. know. He's like, I want to feel good again. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's also what I don't relate to, like these NF types. I'm like, eh, what are you doing? Let's let's talk about that then. So um in, in the original Myers Briggs terms, mm-hmm. technically we're both still NFs, right? Yeah. We're still both idealists. And I do feel like I am inside, to be honest with you. Like um, I, I do um resonate to a lot of that stuff, but um I, I have a hard um, line where like if you cross this line I now think you're crazy you know <laughs> like, 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 um, like a lot of stuff with NF is very important like what's the point for example that's really good right like there's no point arguing because there's no point right um, exactly yeah. you know following your passion your dreams these are all really important stuff right like yeah. if it's not meaningful to you then if there's no point right so all this NF stuff is important obviously mm-hmm. but there's a point where it crosses and now you're talking about crystals and healing and everything <laughs> And now I think you're, yeah. you're, you're fucking batshit crazy now. And yeah. you just lost me, you know? Yeah. So tell me where is that line for you where it's like, yes, you, you, you believe all the stuff. It's really great stuff. And then suddenly you just went to, to crazy land, you know? Okay. That, that's that's a, such a good question because I, I relate to that so much. And you don't really feel like a lot of, like you don't feel like a typical NF in that sense. Like you don't, that's very interesting. Yeah. 
and well, just from I'm, this conversation. I'm, I'm an NET ENFP, right? So I'm like you. Ah, what? you're NET. Oh, I, I wasn't aware you're a jumper. No, no, I'm, I'm an ENFP like you. I'm, I mean, sorry, I'm an ENFP, but I'm the jumper type. So we're both we're we're okay. we're speaking the same language. We're we're both okay. NP, right? so. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So the line for me is, um, you can have, like okay. So from a science perspective, uh, all of this NF stuff is uh, most of it. You can't cram it into the IJ box that is like the scientific method because you know all of these like energies. You can't like we don't have any way to measure that. If, if, if it's there, like we don't know if it's there and we can't really measure it at the moment. So if, if it's fine for me if you say, oh, you know, I just think that's how it is and blah, blah, blah. But the point it, it crosses is where you say, okay, we don't know if it's there, it might be there, um, but not only am I gonna believe in it, I'm gonna believe in it in favor of everything that we've established through like the material science. It's like, I'm gonna believe in like this all this healing uh, in favor of, you know, science, medication, we've actually tested, we know it works. Right. It's like, that's where you go too far for me. So wh right. where's the line for you? Like, is that similar for you? Or? Um, kind of, kind of. Um, I, th I think I'm a little bit more NF than you in that, in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's certain things I don't believe, like Chinese medicine, for example, like a lot of it I think is like bullshit. Like yeah. they're killing the tigers, for example, to get their, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. You know, I think that's like BS. Um, you know, when my INFJ sister starts talking about her crystals, healing crystals, you know, um, like I think one of the dumbest things she told me once was like the light was flickering in our room and she's like this is the vibration you know you and me were, we're high vibration creatures and, and we're, we're causing the light to flicker I'm like I think we just need to change the lights you know it's yeah. like yeah. You know, the light's not flickering because of high vibration it's, it's flickering because it's, it's, it, it needs yeah. to be changed you know that, that's crazy now right and um, but there's certain things about like like um, the NF that I believe in for example I really believe in the vibe of the person. Like you can, you can absorb someone's um, personality based on the vibe they're giving off, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's a scientific reason for this. Obviously, like you know, our face makes a lot of micro um, expression mm -hmm. that cannot be detected through your eyes, but it, it can be detected through your eyes subconsciously. It's just like hard to pick up um, on a microscope on a you know such a microscopic in such a quick movement because sure. the, the, the facial muscles moving such a quick way that you can't really detect it. Right, um, yeah. but you can, but we just kind of describe it as vibe. Like this is the vibe the person's giving, but really we're like picking up their facial expression in a micro, yeah. in a micro scale, I guess. Um, but I do believe like certain people give out certain flavor, like a vibe, right? Like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this person feels like, like this, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I believe in that, that NF sense for that, that stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, okay, something feels off about this person. You know, I can't put, I can't quite describe yeah. what it is, but something feels off, right? Mm -hmm. And in that case, I believe there's that, there's the end of stuff. I believe that, you know, um, the sixth sense, let's say, let's call it the sixth sense, right? Like mm -hmm. that stuff. But you know, when you talk about crystals and energies and healing, uh, okay, you, you've lost me. Like you're, you're, you're just nuts now. I, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Like the vibe of a person. That's also something I like. Yeah, I mean, you, you have these experiences, and I'm like, not, not, I'm not, I'm not saying that none of this, uh, none of this stuff is 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 true, but it's just you know, uh, if if you always jump to the explanation first, that's like, like the NF explanation, like oh something woo woo, instead of like looking at the, the actual sensory and like okay, you know, the lights clicking because you know, the lamps, the lamps, uh, yeah, whatever. yeah, well, it's like, yeah. well, I'll I'll give you another NF example that I really believe in. Um, and again, this might be crazy, but I'm not really sure. So there's a book called The Alchemist. I don't know if you've ever read it or listened to the audio of it. Heard about it, but haven't read I'll, it. I'll give you the general gist of the story. So pretty much the story is the hero's journey, essentially, right? Yeah. Um, no surprise oh, there. What's that? No surprise there. Yeah, no, no, no. surprise. Right? It's the hero's journey. Um, but I feel like the book had a lot of wisdom that really applies to real life. That's why I think <clears> it's so popular. Um, for example, in the book, they tell you that, you know, when, when you're a young person, you kind of know that you have a mission in life that you must fulfill, that you must, you must do it. And if you don't do it, there's always going to be that part of you that feels something is wrong, you know? And mm -hmm. I believe that, I believe that, you know, when you're, you're, when you're a young person, there's always like something that's telling you that, okay, you need to do this. Like maybe for you, it's like the space exploration thing, right? You know, yeah. like for yeah. me, like something like I've, I've always had this two voice in my head. Number one. I have to visit every single country in the world. It's kind of like my mission. Mm. Uh, so I've been to 88 countries now, right? 
So yeah. also visit all 193 UN recognized countries. And the second one, this is the second phase of my life. So first phase, visit all countries. Second phase is um, to start some kind of like alternative education for people who are into uh, in, uh, intuitive dominant, uh, end doms, intuitive dominant people. Oh, because, okay. because I feel like the traditional school does do a big disservice for end dominant people, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that traditional school is good for sensory dom- dominant people, but it's yeah. not for end dominant people. So my second phase of my life, I would like to start some kind of school for end dominant people um, to teach them how to use sensory essentially, because we're stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, we are. You know, yeah. like how to take your imaginations and turn it to reality, essentially, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, that's very cool. Yeah. So that's kind of like my first NF stuff. So um, in the story, the alchemist, um, the main character, I think his name is Santiago. He had a dream, right? And his dream is to go to Egypt to find his treasure in Egypt, right? Mm-hmm. And and the whole story was pretty much him meeting people that have forsaken their dreams. Yeah. Like this for yeah. one person's dream, for example, is to go to the Mecca. Uh, another person's dream is to do this. And they all kind of gave up part way to the dream, right? And he, he talks about like each stages of the journey to reach your dream, right? Mm-hmm. So the first part, you get like beginner's luck, you know, like you're, get, you're just getting lucky left and right and things are just going so well for you, right? And the next part yeah. of the obstacle is that you get comfortable in, 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 in like one area and you almost don't want to leave because you get comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. You, you kind of get stuck in that box, that NI box or IJ box, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but you have to leave the box and you have to go to the next phase. Then the next, from that point, from beginner's luck to that co- comfortable box part comes the b- long, boring, grueling journey that is like repetitive, boring mm-hmm. stuff that like no one wants to do. Mm-hmm. And after you go through that journey, you get to an oasis where it's like, oh, everything's perfect now. My life is good. <laughs> Because in, yeah. in, in the story, he found his perfect girlfriend. He found his, like, he's making a lot of money. He's, he's, mm-hmm. And in that point, you've won the victory that is an external victory. Mm-hmm. And it's an external victory. Like, you've gotten money. You've gotten the material things that you've always wanted, the relationship that you've always wanted. But you have not won the internal victory. Because the mm-hmm. last part of the journey is the part where you have to let go of that external victory. Oh yeah. That last part is the hardest part because now you're not getting any external validation. Yeah. And this last part is moving at a snail space. It's like barely moving. It's like mm. by millimeter by millimeter by millimeter, right? It's yeah. almost like you know when you I don't know if you've ever gone hiking and the last yeah. the last part of the hike is the hardest because you're scrambling through rocks and stuff and you're like, oh yeah. my god, it's like I'm barely moving here, but I can see the top already. But I it's, mm-hmm. it, it it just isn't getting closer. Yeah. Almost like, takes like another hour just to finish this last part you know yeah that's yeah. like the final part of the journey and then the final part there's like a last boss that like almost kills you before you finally hit that goal mm-hmm. and you realize that the, the treasure has always been in your home you know so you, you go back oh home. yes mm-hmm. right so, so i believe in that i believe in that hero's journey essentially that and it's very nf right but i believe in it because i there's so much evidence that this is true for a lot of people like you know like um, a lot of people wanted to give up and then they turn like, like like the KFC guy, right? The guy who created KFC. He got mm-hmm. and he didn't hit his goal of getting KFC to become successful until he was in his sixties, right? So mm-hmm. I really and, and this he's not the only example. A lot of people have this like exact same journey that you know the exact same thing happened, right? So, um, yeah. so in this NF sense, I believe it. So I don't know what your what your take is. Do you believe in this NF hero's journey, or do you think it's bullshit and it's just like a random coincidence of an event that happened? Yeah, that, that's it's really interesting because I think I also don't think that this is like random. Like I don't think it's a coincidence that this is like such an overall theme for not not only so many people, but in all religions, this story comes up over and over again. It's like this story is like everywhere in, in human history. I'm not sure if you uh, uh, watch uh, Jordan Peterson, but he talks about this like extensively. This recurring theme of 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 these patterns and the hero journey is one of these patterns, and that's. Um, yeah, it's super fascinating because I also have uh, believe in this kind of NF thing or, or believe I'm kind of wondering if that's true. Like I'm noticing that weirdly enough, some things in my life just come at the right point when I actually like need it and when I'm like ready for it. It's, it's so weird. I'm like, is this like a, a case of um, before I'm not seeing it or is it 
like, what is this? Because I'm like, really at this point where I could need exactly this thing right now and then it's here. Yeah. It's like, why is that? How does this happen? Right. So uh, when, when those moments happen, did you start, start believing the NF stuff? You're like, this, there's something to this NF stuff. It's, it's real. It's not it's everything, like, but this, this part is at least. It's like every time it's, it's, it's a little, it makes me wonder more what, what else is there? Like, I, I'm a, I don't believe that there is any, you know, I mean, I don't believe it. there's just no evidence for any, like, let's say higher being or God or whatever, like no concrete, like thing um, for me. Um, and, but, but somehow, like, I, I wonder, you know, it may, it could be, you know, you, whatever, you know, uh, I don't know. It, every time it makes me wonder a bit more, like what else, like, is this, is this a pattern? What is going on? So, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe in, 50 years, I'll, I'll, I'll be like NF hippie. You know? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you wearing a tie-dye shirt and, and like long hair. Yeah, man. I mean. Yeah, you know, like Jesus, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, but like, you know, Tim Ferriss, he's the biggest anti guy in the world, right? Like the biggest anti INTJ guy, you know. Uh, do you know Tim Ferriss? Uh, I, I know the name, but sadly, I, I don't really know the, the okay. person, apparently. Yeah. Well, the book, The 4-Hour Workweek um the four hour body. oh this guy yeah 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 this yeah. guy yeah this guy yeah this this asshole <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but like uh he's he's like the extreme logical atheist person in the world right yeah and then he did um he did psychedelics and mushrooms and stuff and he's like oh yeah like yeah he's like now i can't say i'm a pure atheist after doing that it's like there, there's it's like there's something out there that cannot be explained through science you know it's like uh yeah and you know what? I totally agree with that. You know, there's some things out there that can't be explained by science. I mean, I kind of in in some way, it like it makes sense. Like we're all with science, we're capturing like the S the ST in right. some way, right? But what about the NF? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm processing it. It's it's it's, it's weird. It's really no worries, really weird. No worries. Yeah. But no, I I I um I agree with you that there are certain things in life that happens to you out of nowhere and you're just shocked that it's happening you know like it's yeah it's almost like a pure coincidence um it's, it's kind of like a weird thing because like when i took a year i've, I've never gone backpacking before that one year that I, I took a year off to go backpacking it was the first time i've ever done it in my life wow. uh, you know I, yeah. I just had a backpack with me i live on a backpack you know i slept in ho mostly hostels and um yeah. and it was like a weird feeling because i was navigating from country to the country I went to some dangerous countries, countries too, right? I went to Venezuela, for example. Um, yeah. I was with a smuggler in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, you know, like I, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot of chaos happened, right? Yeah. But like, for me, when all this stuff happened, I really navigated through it with so much finesse, so much yeah. like, like, like I felt like, oh my God, I was born for this. Like, it was like a, a super, a, a superpower that, that I didn't realize that, I was like, man, if I could do this for a living, I would be like God because like I was so, <laughs> I was so good at it. Like yeah. navigating through chaos was something that I was designed. Like it was almost my design. Like I was designed for this, you know. Um, yeah, it's so fascinating. Okay. And like oh. there's so like there's there's so many things that happened during this trip that that would like kill you. Like like for example, yeah. I have a one minute transfer from one train to the next train, and the next train is. It's a really far away. Yeah. And I would jump right into the train right when the door was closing. Wow. Yeah. 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 Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's like I was born for chaos and I was like, and it's like, and I, I had to think of it from an NF sense. Like, oh my God, I was born for this. Like, this is, it, it, it's, it's like so hard to describe what it was. It was just like, very, yeah. there was no reason for it. It was like, it was just like, oh, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that, that's the thing about NF, you know, it's really hard to describe what actually what, what you're kind of experiencing, right? It's, it's very, it's very hard to grasp in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And your NF last, right? So at least I'm NF third, your NF last. So that's going to be like a lot, that's going to be your biggest life problem, right? This NF, right? So. NF, wait. Your blast last, your, your blast last, your blast is NF. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So let's, let's go to your, let's go to this question now for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your blast last and NF last. So let's go with NF since we're already talking about it, and then we'll go to blast last next. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of problems have you experienced in your life as a result of having um, blast last or NF last and blast last? So the blast last is really, 
I have a hard time, or I had a hard time, like, like just speaking up or speaking in front of people. Yeah. You also realized during the interview, like, I have a hard time just, you know, explaining my thoughts, you know, putting it out there, do a lot of pauses. Um, but, but I mean, I don't think it's like the, it's like super bad to have it last in a sense because, um, it's it's like a muscle like you can you can really practice blasting so you can do you can practice presenting which I actually like a lot I like to present a lot to you know stand in front of a couple of people or a couple of dozen or a hundred people and just you know talk or explain something um, yeah oddly enough I like that and I, I didn't have trouble like a lot of trouble in the sense it was just like yeah I, I'm always more the quiet guy you know that's it doesn't get you into that much trouble if you're just really quiet generally. If you're the loud, obnoxious type and impulsive, that gets you into a lot of trouble, you know. Yes. Um, and the NF last, mm, I'm not sure. I don't think it put me in a lot of trouble, to be honest. It's more like now. It's it's more like now that I'm seeing it could put me in a lot of trouble if I go only down this. Um, you know, this is what's real, and, and this is what the science says, and there's nothing else except that. Like if I wouldn't wouldn't stop and, and like see these weird coincidences and think what's that you know like if i think if i don't consider these things as well that could probably put me into a lot of trouble in 30 years potentially yeah. gotcha gotcha what does what 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 do you see the kind of problems that you would experience if you don't respect nf um in the in the long term yeah i mean probably probably like kind of going in the wrong direction. So like figuring out, okay, this is what makes sense. This is the way to go, but not being in touch with, you know, maybe going down a way that's just what I feel I should do. And yeah, maybe something that's not really coming from a, oh, I figured this out. This is the best way to do it. This is the, the optimal thing. And just doing something just because I feel like I want to do it and I think I should do it. And it's kind of also, I think that's where I'm kind of going because like I have something that I don't know why, but I just, I, 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 I want to be involved with like space travel and things like that. And you know, um, this biology, it's, it's not for reasons that I decided that it's just, that's the way it is. So, so they said that people with NI, one of the biggest problems that you might have as an NI person is that if you pick the wrong path, you'll fall off a cliff. If you yeah, pick yeah. the right path, you're gonna be unstoppable. So, and then basically you have to use your SE as a scanner to mm -hmm. make sure that it's actually the right path. Yeah. Um, do you feel like having a double activated SE would help you determine if you're going the right path or not? Or do you feel like you kind of you're kind of blind because you're you're only seeing from one eye that you're going the the right or the wrong path? So this is also an NF question because NF is like this is the this is the right life direction for you, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought for the longest time that I would wanted to become a scientist, so do research. Okay. Um, but when I was doing some summer projects in, in labs, uh, it was last summer actually. Yeah. Like I I, I, I talked to the people there, uh, like the PhD students and stuff like that, and uh, like kind of like you could say like gathering the information, like what, what do the people see? And I just realized that the idea that I had of what's doing science is and being a researcher is it's completely wrong. Right. And, and in actual, in actuality, I hate it. Okay. <laughs> I really hate it. I really don't like it. Uh, this, this, this super, like in the summer project I did, it was about three months. And just in the first two months I had to redo an experiment that just didn't want to work and like for for two months i was stuck doing the same thing over and over again with no results at the end and that people told me you know that's what it's like and i just didn't want to do that and so i decided to not go into research and go into to a new direction so i think yeah it, it helps me it's a bit easier for me to see okay look you want to go down this path you think that's what you will go to but actually it's it's a bit different if you look you know a bit besides you so gotcha Oh, that's awesome, man. Having a double activate SC really makes a big difference. Yeah, I think, I think it, it does. It, it helps, but it's also a bit, you know, I'm, I'm some sort of a small chaos monkey in some 
ways and at some times, you know. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a trade off, but, but yeah, it helps in some ways. <laughs> I think the only question I haven't asked you is uh, what's your double feminine play like? Because we both have double feminine play, but it's, diff it's a little bit different for, for each of us. So what's your double feminine play like? Mm. I mean, it's like the third, it's my third function. So Dave and Chan usually call that the, uh, the hobby function. Yeah. So it's what I do in my free time. I mean, I like to tutor people. I do a lot of tutoring, like maths or science, whatever. Um, I, I, I can, can be very, very goofy, very, very silly with very good friends, uh, not with people I don't know. That's too, uh, I don't know, I have a hard, hard time like, expressing myself then. But yeah, I have this very goofy side to me. That's, that's like the feminine, feminine play. Um, also not very shabby, like with the sports, like I play volleyball and I don't want to play baske basketball with other people or like get into debates. I just kind of want to, yeah, don't really want to be part of that, you know? So you try to avoid conflict then, would you say? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, which is not good. Like in some situations, you shouldn't do that. You should seek the, sh the short-term conflict um, that resolves things instead of dragging it out, you know? What has your experience been like with conflict, like, what problems have you caused in your life because you were avoiding conflict? Yeah, that's. A <laughs> um, so I think. Okay, so generally with people, um, friends that let's say I hung out with but aren't like too good friends, and we have like disagreements. I don't really like bring it up a lot, but at some point I'm just like realizing like I'm hanging out with people that are so different from me I, I really don't want to have anything to do with them anymore and then I just like just like, kind of cut off contact and I'm like very abrupt like yeah I don't really want to hang out with you anymore and then people are like like why what's going on and because I haven't because they don't know like what I'm feeling and I haven't yeah. expressed it right a lot of that but then double masculine the double masculine inner world came out <laughs> yeah yeah it's like no I I I don't want to be influenced by, by these people, right? So I, bye bye. Yeah. 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 Um, it's kind of interesting you brought that up because, like, I had to learn that too. Um, I, so I wanted to ask you a question about boundaries, actually, because uh, people with sure. high, people with high sleep are really good with boundaries. Um, yeah. so I have sleep last, so my boundaries is pretty bad. I, it's gotten better as I got older, obviously, but mm -hmm. like. Um, one of the things I've been doing, I guess, pretty good was like dealing with conflict is that like I, I have a boss who when he first got promoted because we were not equal before. Now he's like my boss. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, th I felt like he was doing some stuff that was kind of like undermining my skill set, um, especially because I have more experience than him, actually. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Yeah. But I think the office people felt that he was more mature than I was, which is probably okay. true because I'm play first. So I'm like very goofy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would fight with him, right? I would blatantly fight with him in the back office and he would get so upset at me. I right? was so annoyed, right? But after a while, it, it kind of calmed down and there's no more conflict and we, we got it all out like on the table and there's no more problem. Like we, now we have no problems, right? Okay. And yeah. he used to say, you're so annoying, you know? And then I'm like, I'm like, hey man, at least you know where, where I'm coming from. Like there's no, like there's, I'm not hiding anything from you. You know exactly yeah. where I'm coming from, you know? I'm, and it's actually good that I'm being annoying to you because at least you know that that I, I respect you enough that I can talk to you candidly and, and not like hide anything from you, right? So yeah. he's always kind of respected that. Like he thought it was super annoying, but he kind of respected like, okay, you know what? It's good that I have my staff's trust that they can talk to me about anything. Like they can openly speak to me about anything. You know, so I think that's where the conflict is kind of like, it's good. It's a good sign that people kind of trust you, that they could mm -hmm. talk to you openly, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But the part that I, I was bad, what, bad at was like setting boundaries because I have sleep glass, right? Mm -hmm. so, because I play first, all my problems is like overreaching to the tribe and then the tribe would burn me, right? But yeah. the truth is they burned me because I was overreaching. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, if you try to touch the sun, you're gonna get burned, right? Yeah. You know, at some, at some point, if you go to like a nice tropical vacation, it's nice for like the sun, you know, it feels good for the heat and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're too long, you get burned, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, totally. So and like for me, I had to start set, learning how to set boundaries. Like, okay, I know this, I know this person's a toxic person, but if this person is still my friend, so I need to limit my interaction with this person. So for this person, only five minutes. This person, one hour. 
this person once a month, this person once a year. Like I need to put like specific um, a timer for each person that I spend time with because otherwise, oh okay, yeah, I'm, it's gonna they're gonna be toxic for me, right? But yeah. I notice people would sleep first or sleep savior. Yeah, you just just do it normally. You're like, oh yeah, I do that already. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't feel like hanging with this person anyways. I don't like this person. You know, screw this person. Or like, oh yeah, yeah, I don't like. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to talk anymore. I'm going home. You know, it's like it's like it's <laughs> like normal, right? So talk about yeah. like, what is your experience with yeah. that? I mean, that's the, the really the thing where I'm like, yeah, it, it's enough for me. Like, I, I'm done talking. Like, bye bye. That's like really uh, like a pretty common theme because if I'm invited to parties or events or birthdays or whatever, I'm usually the first person to go. And I do like set myself like like a limit. Okay, like you, if if I know like oh, I don't really want to go, but okay, like I, I need to practice this. You know, going off people, not saying no all the time. But then I say, okay, look, you're going to go to the party, but you're going to leave after like three hours or four hours or whatever. And then, you know, I just say, okay, hey guys, I'm going. And then everyone's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like you're leaving so early. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going. Like it was cool, but uh, you know, I just want to go home. <laughs> yeah. So th that's really what, what I do. Um, and I know like I'm pushing myself to, 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 to go, but then I'm not going to be there I'm not going to be the last person who leaves. That's, that's, that's really not me. And if like, to me, it's really interesting when you say, um, you know, this person is, is toxic or I can only deal with them like five minutes. I'm like if this person is not needed for anything in my life and they're toxic, like I'm not going to talk to them for even a minute. Like, because no, no. I mean, what if they, what if you do need them in your life? There's like a part of them that you do need. Yeah. If you need them, that's a different question. I mean, that's, yeah. that I, I try to like, just, just, just TI direct professional, just, you know, for whatever we need to talk about, okay, we talk about it and then bye-bye. Like just keep it as short as possible. And like, right. Yeah. Okay. So, so there is, there is a timer still. It's just like, let's get to business. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah, absolutely. That's really get to business. Bye-bye. Yeah. So it's, so it's like versus like someone that's your best friend and you love hanging out with this person and yeah, you're, let's hang out. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So my last question to you, because I just, we just brought this up, um, is that energy dominant, you're energy dominant, right? So, mm -hmm. um, what's your experience been like as an energy dom person? Like, do you have trouble with information because you're not just, you're not like, you know, blasting. Cause sometimes you don't, you, you don't get the full information unless you blast. Right. So, um, what's your experience like with the energy dom though? Cause you're balanced with energy preservation and ex energy expenditure, but then you're terrible at consume and blast like having a balance of information you know yeah yeah so one thing i notice is that um communicating my thoughts is like because of the demon blast i mean that goes a bit back to you know getting me into trouble because like i don't communicate to people what i'm doing or when plans are changing because or, or i just i just assume okay we discussed something um and for me, like the conclusion was clear, but we didn't write like the conclusion down, but for the other person it was different. So I'm like having trouble with like not being aligned on the information with other people and that just messes stuff up. Right. You know what I mean? Um, on the energy dump, I'm not really sure like how that would, how it would look like because I haven't, I haven't really thought about that much, but maybe if you, if you give like an example. Um, okay, so. Uh, um, okay. I have sleep last, so yeah. oftentimes I get really burnt out. So I've had health issues, like hurt my lower back. I should have stopped exercising, but I kept going. Um, um, I should have got, gotten more sleep. You know, I, I, my sleep is very poor. Um, okay. You know, between interaction with people, I should take a break in between, but I don't take a break. I should just, I just keep going, you know? So um, even people who are, you know, let's say they're, they're self of tribe, but they have high play, for example. They, I, I've seen them do this also where they just keep going and they burn themselves out and they have health issues like six months down the, down the road. So, mm. you know, what's your experience with that? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's, uh, it's, it's really, if, if there's something going on, if people are over or whatever, I don't have a hard time just saying I need to go sleep because if I don't go to sleep now, I will not have enough sleep and tomorrow I'll just be, I'll just be a mess in, in the morning or throughout the day. And I, I don't want to, I really hate it when 
when like my whole day gets screwed up because I'm like I'm out drinking or anything because I I don't really like go to clubs or anything because if you come home come home at like three five in the morning and like somewhat intoxicated the next day is just is is wasted because I can't get anything done and that's just horrible yeah. I hate that so much so yeah I mean I I totally see what you're saying with you know the play first you you can't really stop going no breaks no breaks yeah man. yeah there's no breaks yeah but for me the thing is the breaks are down too often you know, like usually yeah. i'm like they could be going but i'm like oh no i don't really want to you know and that's yeah. kind of what i have to practice a bit you know what that that's what pisses me off about the blast last people the most um i have a lot of blast i have a lot of blast last friends because i think yeah. it makes sense that i would make friends with blast last people it's like it's like a natural like even right now we're talking it's like it's easy yeah. right um but like they'll make so much assumptions that this is not the conclusion we came up with. That's exactly it. Never yeah. told me that this is what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Like, like how self, how of an asshole are you? Not, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so annoying. Like, you know, you need yeah. to communicate. Mm-hmm. If there's a change in plans, you need to tell me. You yeah. don't tell me last minute also. You have to tell me like a few days in advance. Because I already mm-hmm. know that you know ahead of time that this is what mm-hmm. you were thinking. Yeah. Just send me a quick text. It's done. Like, it's not a problem, you know? Yeah, and then the blast last people just won't do it. They're like, "Oh my mm-hmm. god, mm-hmm. It's a relationship," you know. Yeah, that's what I've experienced as well. So I, I, I take this um, feedback to try to incorporate it and, and then work on that. But you're right. I mean, it's uh, okay. It's so, not cool. Yeah. How hard is it to send a quick text? How hard? It's, is it? <laughs> it's probably, like thirty seconds. Like, thirty seconds. Yeah. The, the thing is, like, I don't want to feel. I don't want the other person to feel bad because things changed or something like that. You know, I just, I don't, I have a hard time like yeah, in the short term being like, no, this is not going to happen because whatever, something came up. Uh, yeah, it's, but, it's super weird. But, but then it, in the end, it's, it's much worse, you know? If it you is. Longer, I, I feel worse yeah, when that, those, that asshole, no those asshole blast last people do it, you know? Yeah. Like, like I would feel better if you said, can't make it, reschedule. Like it's three words, can't make it, reschedule. Like it's like three words, like, can make it dot reschedules question mark. It's like, mm. it's so easy, you know? Mm. I would feel better. I'd read it, it's like, oh yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's fine. You know, especially I have feminine DE, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, sure, that's fine. You know, uh, I see. Yeah. You know, maybe if you have a masculine DE person, they would, they would sc- like scream at your face, but yeah. I, I, it's important to know what your friends is like too, obviously, so. True, yeah, true. Yeah. No, but that's really good advice actually, yeah. Yeah, and I think yeah. just like common courtesy to communicate, right? It's like, yeah be a good human being, you know, like, it's just, you know, it's, Ouch. <laughs> yeah. that? No, no. no, but it's, it's, it's true. It's true. It's just, it is true. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, that's a great point actually. All right. So, um, Alexander, I have two questions for you and we're done. So the first one sure. is what, how, so since we're in this topic already, what advice can you give to blast last people to improve on their blast? Okay. So from my own experience, it's, it's, Whenever you get the chance to do a presentation, do it, because it forces you to. To yes, you have to consume, but but especially, um, doing something, doing a presentation when you're not fully con- like confident with the content, so you just kind of have to bullshit a bit, and that's really really helpful because you're standing there, you're not like sure what it is, but just say something, just you know say what comes to your mind. That helped me a lot, although I don't recommend it if you don't have to you know, bullshit a presentation, but. You know, maybe practice with it, whatever. Just to do, do a karaoke presentation. Uh, and the second thing is, um, uh, if you're like into sports or like video games, try doing like uh, try doing like for for a, a smaller league um, casting. So commentating live games. That's oh, what, what, what I'm trying to do right now, and it's super hard because as like the game is being played, you have to comment on what's happening. Yeah. And it's like you just have to say whatever comes to your mind. It's, it's right. really really good practice. That's a really good tip because you have yeah. to be quick. You can't super quick. You'll be an yeah. awful commentator if you're not saying anything. Oh yeah, it's you. You have to. You. You. It's two people usually, but when the other person stops talking, you need to go in with something, and it needs to be something, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think also doing interviews might be good too because then you have to be quick also, right? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you have a process before. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Interviews. Uh, my last question to you is that we have completely different functions. Is there any functions that I have that might 
have a big question mark in your head. It's like, how does that work? You know, or like, what is that like? So I have F I S I T E and N E. So do you have any questions about any of those functions that might have, you have like a burning question. It's like, it's like I don't understand this. Like, how does this function work? Yeah. Like I thought I have any, yeah. which I don't <laughs> right. for obvious reasons. So how do you see the difference between like me and you or more specifically N I and N E if it's, if us, the difference between us is not really clear. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you my perspective and the way Dave experienced having an NE friend, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the way Dave explained NE, having an NE friend, was that he had a permanent scanner with him at all times. Mm -hmm. So he's focusing on his work, but his ENFP partner is like looking for chaos that's coming from the future. And he said, hey, Dave, this is, this, like, this is your plan, but this thing is going to come. It's going to screw up your plan. So we need to uh, address this, okay. this yeah. problem. And they were like, oh, oh, thanks, man. Oh, my God. You're right. Oh, my God. I didn't even see that coming. And he'll be working again. He's like, oh, my God, there's another problem. So yeah. I didn't even realize I was doing this in my life all the time. But I always know what's coming. Like, nothing is coming to surprise me. I know my taxes is coming around the corner. I'm not surprised. I know my taxes is coming around the corner. Um, you know, um, I know I know that my, um, I just know that, like, I know I have a conflict with this person and we're going to have a, we're going to have a confrontation eventually, you know? Yeah. Um, so I just know where the chaos is happening at all times. Like I am not surprised. Like when the chaos happens, like I didn't trip me on my feet. I'm like, I, yeah, I, I knew this was going to happen. Like I can almost see, like, um, I'll give you an example. Um, I, I traveled in Africa a lot. And one of the things that happens when you're in Africa is you deal with a lot of corruption, right? Right. Like people are going to try to extort bribe from you, especially with the immigration mm -hmm. officers. Yeah. 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 And for me, you know, that's kind of like my fear is like control, right? Like, like the big police, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've already imagined in my head every single scenario that the chaotic situation where yeah. this person is going to try to control me, right? Yeah. So that I'm already ready by the time it happens. And you, you know what it does? It did, and usually my, my, my visualization is worse than reality, right? So when it actually happens, I'm like, oh, that's it. Oh, that's, that was just a joke, you know. Like, oh, that's why yeah. EPs are, that's why yeah. EPs are the best at dealing with chaos, is because they already imagined the worst chaos that could happen. They've yeah. already imagined how they would react to the worst chaos, and they they kind of they kind of rehearse it already how they're gonna react to it, right? So for example, in Madagascar, someone was extorting me for a bribe, right? And I just said, no, I'm not gonna give you any money, right? And that's mm -hmm. it. And they're just like, oh, okay, you know, it's like. I'm like, oh, cool. I thought they were going to like put me in the back room and yeah. like punish me or something, but yeah, it, it was fine. Easy enough. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's number one. And then number two, it's like, it's kind of like my sister, you know, yoga. I'm only doing yoga or for you. I'm only doing volleyball. Right. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, if you don't lift weights, you're going to have issues with your bone density when you're old and you're going to start shrinking and you're going to have brittle bone. You're going to have fractures. So you need to lift weights, maybe not for muscles or to look good or to get six pack, but to protect your bone density, you know, cause I teach osteofit. I teach people with osteoporosis, right? And I can okay. tell you all those people, they would not have this problem had they just lifted weights their whole life. You don't even have to lift heavy. You can just lift like, just like, you know, at, at, at a reasonable amount of weight. And guess what? For the rest of your life, it's like, um, it's like doing banking, right? You know, if you make deposits in your bank account, you'll have yeah. safe. And then when you retire, you're not going to be broke, right? You can have, yeah. So it's like, it's like your bone deposits, right? If you don't lift weights, you're not making deposits in your bone density. And by the time you get to that age where you don't have any more testosterone or estrogen, mm -hmm. and you're, so when you get to the point where you have no more testosterone or estrogen, your bone density starts going down, you get fractures, you break a hip, you're screwed, right? Um, yeah. Hey, yeah, guess totally. what? If you've been lifting weights your whole life, you're not going to have fractures. You're not going to shrink. You're not going to have bone issues. You can, you're 70 year old. You're still running outside. You're going hiking. You're, you're, you're okay. You're not scared of falling. You could have prevented this chaos if you were not an idiot and you lifted weights, you know? Yeah. Maybe yeah. you'll start lifting weights now, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but oh, like, man, it's already already said no. But uh, yeah, actually, I would consider it, definitely. Yeah, and, and it's, it's to prevent chaos, essentially, right? So, I, I like, the NE can, can see this stuff. Certain activities can prevent chaos, and you should participate in these activities because it's going to prevent chaos. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Great explanation. Thanks. That, uh, that help, help with very, very useful. Yeah, totally. All right. Cool, man. Thanks, Alexander, for doing this interview. Sure. Thanks, Kendrick. It uh, was fun. Yeah, it was a great time. All right, man. I'm going to stop this interview. So bye, everyone. And we're